ओम सदाशिव समारंभम शंकराचार्य मध्यमाम अस्मदाचार्य पर्यंताम वंदे गुरु परंपराम ओम इक्षुरनंदु वी बिगिन विद द थर्टीन्थ चैप्टर ऑफ द भगवत गीता इन द लास्ट क्लास वी हैड अ क्विक इंट्रोडक्शन वी विल बी गोइंग बैक टू वर्स वन एंड वर्स थ्री द थर्टीन्थ चैप्टर फोर्टीन चैप्टर एंड द फिफ्टीन चैप्टर गिव्स यू अ ग्लिम्स ऑफ द एंटायर उपनिषद when we enter the third shatkam suddenly there is a shift and the shift is now from the binary from the triangular format to the binary format there are various prakriyas of teaching modalities in vedanta and in this particular kshetra kshetra gnya vibhaga yoga the prakriya that is used is called drik drishya viveka whatever i see and experience is not me and therefore you make a distinction whatever i see is an object of my experience it is the kshetram and the one who is seeing is called kshetragnya the whole the first three verses or the first the third verse actually is the most important verse to be understood and uh, swami anubhavananda said if this verse is understood you have understood the entire uh, the th- uh, this uh, 13th chapter itself there is one upanishad which works on a similar line and that is the keno upanishad where you have prati bodha viditam matam in every experience we come to the experiencer last time we had a little confusion because uh, normally or originally the bhagavad gita in this chapter had only 34 verses uh, the great uh, madhusudana saraswati whom we know for all the dhyana shlokas added this particular verse and uh, made it more meaningful and that is why we include in our study this particular verse also i will request venkatesh prasad to take over verse 1 and verse 3 in the new classification over to you venkatesh thank you sir shri guru bhyo namaha we are studying the first chapter in charma shatka that is kshetra kshetragna vibhaga yoga this chapter begins with arjuna asking krishna to teach six topics he names it is said shri madhusudana saraswati who wrote dhyana shloka introduced this shloka and as such some books have this and it doesn't appear in certain other books our guru paramarthananda suggest to add this in our curriculum in order to understand the subject matter with clarity the shloka reads as under prakrutim purusham chaiva kshetr kshetragnami vacha ृतिमृति these two represent material universe and represent achetana tatva and so called anatma vichara then kshetragna purusha and neyam all these three words refer to chaitanyam or consciousness principle and represent chetana tatva so called as atma vichara next is lalitis gnanam this has several meanings most popular one being knowledge in his brilliant reply to arjuna's question krishna in chapter 13 consumes shloka 2 to shloka 24 to explain atma anatma viveka covering the two groups above and in shloka 25 to 35 he takes up nana sadhana and nana phala which is in third group as dr minal has already explained the verse number 2 and defined kshetra and kshetragna beautifully i will straight away go to shloka 3 which reads as under क्षेत्रेशनेसनेस then step 3 we came i am not the body but i am consciousness with an incidental body then step 4 i am the consciousness in my body you are the consciousness in your body 
he is the consciousness in his body our understanding was we have three different bodies and three different consciousness let's take an example we have electric bulb in your drawing room bedroom and kitchen when i put on the switch we see light in all the three bulbs the same electricity flows through all the three bulbs and gives us light similarly the consciousness that is pervading in three bodies of me you and he is same we may call bodies as medium through which consciousness expresses let's take another example i will show you two fingers you are able to see both fingers because light is reflecting on these so you are seeing the fingers and experience the presence of light when i remove the fingers you are neither seeing the finger nor feeling the presence of light that means light is there always but needs the medium of fingers to express itself so light is there on the fingers around the fingers and between the two fingers also it could not be seen due to absence of medium when fingers are removed so we can conclude consciousness is different from matter and pervades all over matter is only a medium for expression of consciousness when matter goes away consciousness does not die but its expression dies let's proceed to step 5 even though this consciousness is all pervading it is known by different names based on the angle from which you look at the consciousness just as a member of a family is known by different names by different people for example you are called as father by your child your parents call you child the same you are addressed as husband by your wife and as brother by your sister similarly consciousness has two names based on the angle from which it is looked at so i the consciousness when working through an individual body i am called jivatma and the very same i the consciousness when manifested through the whole creation i am called paramatma when you forget the body and the world i am simply atma this is jivatma paramatma aikyam to make this more clear take the example of a wave and ocean if water is looked upon as a small name and form it is a wave same water when looked upon as total name and form it is ocean when you remove both wave and ocean only water remains only one water this is atma ekatma gnanam now let's look at verse proper this shloka 3 gains great significance because krishna is revealing this jivatma paramatma aikya and hence this shloka gets the status of mahavakyam and called jivatma paramatma aikya bodhaka vakyam kshetragnam maam vidhi here kshetragna is jivatma who is telling maam vidhi it is krishna he is paramatma jivatma paramatma tvena vidhi krishna is different as a body but same as kshetragna here krishna the paramatma that ocean is telling that water kshetragna in the wave kshetra is ocean paramatma itself this is jivatma paramatma aikyam next comes sarva kshetreshu bharata where is paramatma we saw krishna telling that he is the kshetragna in the kshetra or body so he is the kshetragna in all kshetras hence all the jivatma kshetragnas are nothing but paramatma this is the essence of aham brahmasmi kshetra kshetragnayor gnanam and therefore krishna declares this knowledge about kshetra and kshetragna is that real knowledge in mundaka upanishad this is called paravidya tad gnanam matam mama my view is that this knowledge is real knowledge hari om thank you pinkish for a very nice explanation as krishna said or as the mundaka upanishad said this is the only thing that we no need to know this knowledge has to be internalized this knowledge has to be lived and when you understand that the real you is a combination of matter and consciousness why identify from the matter aspect why not as identify from the consciousness aspect and play the role of that mixture that we are uh, the rest of all the upanishads the rest of all the bhagavad gita is an elaboration of this fact alone which we need to clearly internalize uh, of course krishna will elaborate this a little later we'll go to verse number 4 diksha please 
तत्क्षेत्र यदृक्षा तद्विकारीयत स चो यत्सीन मे शृणु In the beginning of the thirteenth chapter, Arjuna asked for clarification of six technical words used in the scriptures: prakriti, purusha, kshetram, kshetragnya, nyanam, and nena. Nena. In these terms, Lord Krishna has taken up two terminologies: kshetragnya and kshetram, which starts from verse number two onwards and continues up to verse number seven. First, he defines the first the, the two words kshetram and kshetragnya kshetram means the physical body which represents any experienced object in the creation in short i am kshetragnya the experiencer and whatever i experience is kshetram let us do a quick recap shri, shri krishna said that there is only one kind of knowledge that has to be known by a seeker that there are several bodies or conditions called fields that there is just and there is just one knower of all those fields but this knowledge is unknown because of ignorance or avidya with regards to the kshetra the field it is important to learn about what it is what are its characteristics how it undergoes modifications and what is its true source with regards to the knower of the field the kshetragnya we have to also learn what it is what are its powers and what are its effects this is the theoretical aspect of this chapter all this will be covered in just a few shlokas krishna takes up certain questions like what is kshetram what is its nature what are the causes out of which various effects are born what is that kshetragnya and what what glory is it of what glory is it in this verse krishna only asks these terms but addresses these questions in detail in the coming verses this verse is only to create kutuhala or curiosity in the mind of arjuna or in our minds to thoroughly understand these important terms so krishna says tat kshetram yachcha yadrikcha what is the nature of kshetra what is the objective that is the objective universe the objective universe which is different from the subjective experiencer so what is kshetram what is this is the first topic he deals with he then says yadvikari which means what are the causes out of which various effects are born yadvikari refers to karanam yat yat yatascha yat refers to karyam karanam refers to the cause and karyam refers to the effect the idea is that whole objective universe or the kshetram consists of cause effect chain only if you take any individual i am the effect and my parents are the cause and the parent themselves are the effect and their parents are the cause thus anything you take it is an effect of something and it is the cause of something else therefore what are the causes and what are the effect what is kshetram what is his nature what are the causes and effects included in kshetram all these are details of kshetram and not only that krishna also wants to clarify the nature of kshetragnya therefore he says sachaya sachaya what is kshetragnya it is nothing but the consciousness principle previously krishna has defined consciousness as the experiencer of the universe now this is a very brief definition krishna wants to deal with more details regarding consciousness therefore what is consciousness or awareness we know kshetragnya or the consciousness to be indiv- indivisible consciousness which is beyond time consciousness is also beyond space it is not subject to change and it is other than cause and effect all these are different and important features in fact one scientist beautifully says consciousness is that which is not subject to the laws of creation all the physical and chemical laws of the creation cannot influence the consciousness principle and he says it cannot be located because it does not have a location which means that it is beyond time and space 
those features i will introduce to you later krishna says tat sama samasina me shrunu may you listen to that o partha krishna wants arjuna and all of us to give a lot of importance to these two words but why does he want us to give so much importance to these terms the reason has been given in the second verse which is explained by uh, venkatesh sir the knowledge of these two alone is the real knowledge there is alone this is alone the liberating knowledge all other disciplines of knowledge are not really worthwhile this knowledge alone is worthwhile and therefore may you listen to me very carefully tat samasina me samasina means briefly i am going to mention shrunu means listen carefully having given the introduction now krishna wants to elaborate on these terms but before that uses another verse which is the next verse to further glorify this topic therefore to conclude and what is that field and of what is its nature and what are its modifications and from where was it born and who is he and what are his powers listen to me in brief o partha thank you and hari om thank you very much viksha that was a very nice and a very clear explanation now krishna is trying to elaborate that he said this is the most important thing you should know you should know the distinction between kshetram the field of your experience and the one who knows the field the kshetragnya as you will see all our scientific work and 90% of our effort is to study the body the mind and to study the world around with all the tools that we have in science very rarely and it is only in the field of the upanishads and to some extent in the bhagavad gita that the attention is now come to who is the one who is aware of all this world and that is what uh, lord krishna is saying he is going to elaborate on unfortunately being krishna he forgets to elaborate about kshetragnya and he starts to elaborate on kshetram colonel vijayan can you please continue sir hari om sir as uh, has been brought out arjuna at the beginning of the chapter sought to understand the terminologies purusha prakriti kshetram kshetragnya jnanam and neya out of these six words Sri Krishna selects two words, Kshetram and Kshetragnam, and explains it in verses two and three. But he finds it that these two verses, these two words, need a little more elaboration, and he subsequently feels that he will elaborate in succeeding verses. But uh, before explaining and elaborating the two words, he tries to build up an introduction as given in verse four. the verse 5 which i am going to deal gives a glorification of these two words these verses go as rishabhir bahuda gitam chandabhir vividha katha brahma sutra padaschayva hetuma bhir vinishchatai now these two words kshetram and kshetragya are about material and the consciousness which together forms the entire creation the phrase rishibhar bahuda gitam gita means taught so rishibhar is the sages teach these words very differently the next phrase is chando bhir vividha pratah the chando bhir vividha prah means these two words have been mentioned in various uh, vedic hymns as well uh, to bring out the distinction pratah the distinction is that kshetram is the material and kshetragnya is the consciousness the satyam next we have seen in our brahma sutras that they are vedic um, lo- uh, words which are logically analyzed and given in form of sutras or aphorisms krishna says these words 
also find a mention in the Brahma Sutra. The next word, Hetuma Bhir. Hetuma Bhir means a logical analysis. And Vinishtiti Chitaha means after this analysis, it is conclusively established. So hence, hence this phrase, Brahma Sutir Padashchaiva Hetuma Bhir Vinishtiti means these two words have been logically analyzed and conclusively established even in the Brahma Sutra. So sum it up, it says, this has been taught by the sages variously. It has been revealed distinctly through various Vedic hymns. This has been taught through logic as well as ascertained Upanishadic statements which reveal Brahman. Thank you, sir. Ariyo. Thank you, Colonel Vijayan, for a nice explanation of this particular verse where Krishna is trying to say that whatever I am saying is not my own. It has come from our tradition. And this same Shetra Shetra Gnya Vibhaga, the most important thing that we need to know, has been discussed in other texts, uh, Vedas, and also the Brahma Sutra. Now we go into a little more deep. This is a little technical. It may be a little difficult to understand and uh, be a little patient because all Indian philosophical schools have their basis in Sankhya Yoga. Dr. Sheila, can you explain this particular verse? Hari Om. Namaste, sir. Mahabhutanyak ahankaraha buddhir avyakta mevacha indriyani dasaikamcha pancha sendriya gocharaha as sir said, I think yeah, I require a little bit more time, sir, one few seconds more. Here, Krishna is elaborating the topic of Kshetram, that is objective universe or the material principle. This objective universe is analyzed and categorized into various divisions by many philosophies like Vaisheshika, Naya, Nyaya, Sankhya, etc. Here, Vyasacharya has borrowed the categorization from Sankhya philosophy. It is divided into 24 tattvas. In Sanskrit, division is called as tattvani. We have learned this in Tattva Bodha and also in a recently in introduction of Vedanta classes. Creation is not easy topic. So let us recapitulate what we have learned. The evolution of universe is in four stages with gradual increasing the number of tattvams. The first basic matter, the principle, is called prakriti, which is represented as, in the first line, as avyaktam, which represents prakriti. And this is very well explained by Swamiji in, on creation in Tattva Bodha. Here we are talking at samashti level, that is at macrocosm, not veshti, that is at individual level. First, we should understand creation word is misnomer. According to law of conservation of matter and energy, nothing is created or destroyed. So in our scriptures, the word creation is always replaced by the word manifestation. So avyakta is unmanifest. So it only refers to the manifestation of something which was potentially unmanifestly existent. The word unmanifest, we mean pramanam agocharam. Unmanifest is that which is existent, but it is not available for perception or transaction. Very beautiful example given by Swamiji is butter in the milk. Butter in this, in the, in the milk is not seen, but it is there in the milk. Some same thing extended to everything in the creation. Nothing in the creation is non-existent. It was existent in potential manner. Later, it becomes manifest, which means available for transaction. So our scripture says, before origination of this cosmos, it was in a seed form, which we also know in the second verse of uh, uh, Dakshina Stotram, Dakshina Murti Stotram, Bija Santari Vakuro Jagadidam Prana Nirvikalpam Punaha. That is the casual matter, that is Maya, which is in the seed from, that is from which the creation is originated. 
one thing was there it is also this is important it is also beginless anadi so it existed along with brahman that is the intelligent principle therefore the study of cosmology begins with two beginless principles known as brahman and maya that is consciousness and matter principle so but what are the differences you all know very well about the atma but matter is the uh, matter principle has got uh, properties that is like uh, physical or chemical properties so that is there in the potential saguna form okay Me, maya has time and space so subject to change never the same maya can multiply into the cosmos by division this is called srishti nama abhivyaktihi therefore casual universe two subtle universe two gross universe of these casual universe is beginless but the subtle and the gross have the beginning now in the same line buddhihi from this casual universe the next one which evolves the second stage is buddhihi that is a cosmo uh, cosmic intellect or mahat tatvam then ahankara that is cosmic ego from which 16 items evolve they are mahabhutani mahabhutani is five subtle elements they are akashah space vayu agni jalam bhumi so maya is endowed with three fold features which are seen in the universe that is trigunatmika sattva rajo tamo here guna should not be translated as property but components of maya three gunas are like the three strands of plated um, string here one of the meaning of uh, guna is string so the predominant sattva guna component of this five subtle elements becomes five gnanendriyas that is uh, 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 space becomes here uh, air skin fire eyes water tongue and what the earth knows and the predominant rajas uh, uh, guna component becomes pancha karmendriyas that is speech walk hand pani legs pada and uh, uh, anus that is uh, uh, pa payuhu and earth genitals that is upastha so the entire sukshma shariram with behind this is the mind that is one ekam so all together it forms 16 that is pancha five the mahabhutanis pancha that is five gnanendriyanis pancha five karmendriyanis and plus one ekam that is one mind which is all together forms 16 that is a subtle universe so uh, so the entire sukshma shariram is born at uh, out of sattva and rajoguna of the five subtle elements the last line which shows the last two words which says that what is that pancha uh, sendriya gocharaha now these are all agochara gocharaha is that is manifest it is seen so gross so predominant tamas component of the subtle five elements get grossified to become the five gross that is elements that is pancha stula bhutani grossification is also called panchikaranam so like what best always the example which is given is that is salad like make, uh, salad making so from casual universe the subtle universe and then uh, that is the sukshma abhivyaktihi and next stula abhivyaktihi all together forms 24 divisions which has been told that is according to sankhya philosophy so one thing we should remember here that is kshetram here this all has got what is a time and space so this will last for some time during prayer pralaya this collapses and goes into the potential form that is maya or avyakta form thank you sir hari ho thank you dr shila for giving a very elaborate explanation of the uh, sankhya theory of causation so the whole prakriti which gave rise to the entire creation that is why it is called the cause from the cause everything has come into being and uh, uh, i would suggest don't break your head too much but this is there in our text and uh, dr shila has made a good attempt to explain this to us because all our philosophies go back to sankhya when it has to explain some of these basics 
we go to the next verse uh, to explain about the mind. Now we have the first verse where Dr. Sheila spoke about the Kshetram, which is beyond me. This part of Kshetra is within me, my mind. Panaga, please. Harihyom, Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha. Icha Dvesha Sukham Dukham Sanghata Shetana Dhritihi Etat Kshetram Samasena Savikara Mudahritam. Lord Krishna elaborates the properties of the Kshetram in this verse. After listing the 24 tattvams that make up the material universe or the Kshetram, he says our physical body is also a part of the same Kshetram. What about our mind? Several scientists consider psychiatry to be a pseudoscience because the mind and its associated problems cannot be physically verified. But in Vedanta, it is very clear that our mind is definitely matter because it is made up of the five subtle elements and it is inert unless enlivened by the consciousness principle, the Kshetragna. This is the unique nature of the mind. It can borrow and manifest the consciousness. This borrowed sentiency is called Chetana. This quality is not available to the gross body. Just like the nature of the tungsten filament allows it to become a source of light when electricity is passed through it, the nature of the mind enables it to be enlivened by the consciousness and appear sentient. Coming to the verse, Icha, desire, dvesha, hatred, sukha, pleasure, dukkha, pain, dhriti, the willpower to acquire these sukha, dukha causing material objects, sanghataha, the body mind complex, which has borrowed chetana, sentiency, etat, all this, udahritam, enumerated above, samasena, briefly, kshetram, is kshetram, Savikaram, together with all its modifications. Lord Krishna says this body-mind complex with its borrowed chetana is now capable of experiencing the world. Blessed with this ability to experience, the mind starts developing its own likes and dislikes, Icha and Dvesha. The objective, neutral, inert world has now become my subjective, private world filled with my desire or hatred towards certain segments of it. Just as wearing sunglasses makes everything appear darker than it is, Raga and Dvesha are the colored glasses that my mind wears. They selectively make certain things or people appeal to me while, while distancing me from the others. Once we have decided that the neutral world, uh, once we have divided the neutral world into desirable and undesirable, Sukha and Dukha, promptly follow. We all know that material objects and people produce Dukkha Mishrita Sukha. The happiness we feel when we get something we want will turn into sorrow when it is taken from us. And even when it is with us, we are scared of losing it. Our Dhriti willpower is also directed towards acquiring the so-called objects of joy. This pull towards fulfilling our desires is called Pravritti. Conversely, the pull away from certain undesirable objects or situations is called nivritti. We can spend our entire life like this, running from pravritti to nivritti. Thus, through our raga and dvesha, we have given this neutral inert material world the power to make us feel good or bad, happy or sad. Hence, in Vedanta, there are two words, padartha and vishaya. Padartha is a neutral name for a thing. For example, my phone is a padartha. It is an object. The moment I become excessively attached to it and label it as very good, it gains the unique capacity to hurt or please me. When it takes a really good selfie, I'm happy. If by mistake I drop it and the camera lens is cracked, I start resenting my phone and immediately want to get rid of it. The moment the object gains this capacity, Vedanta calls it Vishaya. Vishaya means an object capable of binding me. The whole world, Chetram was Padartha, but through our Raga and Dvesha, we have converted it into Vishaya. 
that which is capable of binding us, which gives us pleasure and pain. Thus, Icha, Dvesha, Sukha, Dukha, the Sanghataha, the body-mind complex, the Chetana, the reflected consciousness, are Kshetram Vikara, properties born out of the Kshetram and belong to the Kshetram alone. To conclude, this verse in a way explains the root cause of samsara. It is also liberating. I now know that the real me, the kshetradna, I'm not any of these things. I'm not bound in any way to the inert matter which has presented itself to, be, to me in various nama and rupa. I'm free. I can begin to see the world as neutral again and can focus my mind on the indweller, the kshetradna. Hari Om. Thank you. Thank you, Panaga. A very nice explanation, a very complete explanation. Uh, just to add a few words, because this is another important verse. Even as you are sit seated wherever you are, become aware of the world around you and see that the world around you is Kshetram. The one who is experiencing this world is Kshetragnya. She nicely explained the difference between Padhartha and Vishaya. All of them are objects, but when you develop a certain attachment to them and likes and dislikes come, then the same padartha becomes a vishaya. And the vishaya has the ability to affect you adversely or in another way, uh, it can affect you either way. Now, our whole job is to see that the world does not affect you at all. Now, more important than the world this verse talks about your own body. It is very easy to dissociate the world, but it is very difficult to dissociate your body because we tend to identify the instrument that I use as also uh, myself. But we, this verse is very clearly telling that if there is something wrong with my body, I need to see that is wrong with my body. I'm the observer of my body. More difficult is it when my mind goes bonkers, when my mind is getting anxious or tense or getting depressed. I watch an anxious mind and a depressed mind. I know I am the witness of an anxious or a depressed mind, but I am not depressed. I am not anxious. Now that is a great shift each of these verses will tell you. From the eighth verse onwards, we see a sudden shift. Now we have moved from Shetra, Shetra, Gnya, Prakriti, Purusha to the other word, which is called Jnanam. What is Jnanam? Can you explain to us, uh, Dr. Satyanarayana? Yes, sir. Om Shri Guru Bhiyo Namaha. The verse goes like this. Ama nitvam adam bhitvam ahim sakshanti hi arjavam acharyo pashanam saucham sthairyam atma vinigraha From verse 2 to 7, Krishna concludes his analysis of Kshetram and Kshetragnya. Now Krishna takes up the third topic, Jnanam. Krishna takes Jnanam with special meaning. Normally, Jnanam means knowledge and in the context of philosophy or Vedanta, it means Atma Jnanam or Brahma Jnanam. But in this particular context, Jnanam has got still different meaning. It means a group of mental virtues required to enjoy a fit mind for gaining spiritual knowledge. Only if the mind is healthy, the intellect will be freely available for higher pursuit. Krishna gives a list of 20 virtues here from verse 8 to 12. If these sadgunas are there, knowledge is very easy to gain. Since these virtues promote self-knowledge, these virtues themselves are called jnanam. If these virtues are not there, an unfit mind will not receive or assimilate the knowledge. It will be like undigested food. This Ajirna Shastram can be counterproductive and therefore more than Vedanta, one has to focus on Vedanta friendly virtues. Without going through the set of virtues, a person cannot hope to attain Jnanam or Moksha and therefore these virtues are extremely important. We will take each virtue one by one and see its meanings. The first one given by Lord Krishna is Amanitvam. Manitvam means self-conceit, self-glorification or self-admiration. Atmani Pujyatva Bhavana, looking upon oneself as a good person. So Amanitvam is freedom from self-conceit or in positive language, humility or Vinaya. 
when we accomplish something in our life in any field naturally the society admires us unknowingly we start admiring ourselves vedanta says self admiration is a very big trap it is a big obstacle for spiritual seeker because it causes addiction excitement and loss of discriminative power thus humility humbling experience is the door for devotion and without humility bhakti cannot come and without bhakti gnanam cannot come the next virtue krishna talks about is adambitvam dambitvam is physically expressed version of manitvam expression of greatness at physical level these are attention seeking expressions like vesham ornamentation that is abharanam and pretension through actions so adambitvam means i do not seek attention in positive language simplicity all great people all great people are simple then the third virtue is ahimsa means non violence not injuring other living being avoidance of injury at three karana level kaika that is physically vachika that is in the verbal abuse and manasa that is mentally cursing others we have seen this in sixth chapter of grita in the 10 commandments of hinduism the first commandment is ahimsa ahimsa is supposed to be mahavratam a spiritual seeker has to be committed very simple law to follow is i should not do what i do not expect others to do to me some important features of these virtues are if i am violent i will be violating dharma and i am hurting myself if i give himsa to the world the world will give back himsa to me and at times it gets multiplied and comes therefore ahimsa becomes important for my future good himsa is natural when anybody does not behave to my expectations psychology says hurt person hurts others and if this natural reaction should stop my mind should become sensitive sensitive to feel of pain of other person in psychological language they call it empathy when i'm hurting another person i am hurting myself and therefore ahimsa means sensitize your mind a sensitive mind is required to appreciate the subtle topics of vedanta the fourth virtue is shanti that is a mental resistance or immunity so that it does not disturb when the expectations are not fulfilled when the setup is incapable of disturbing my mind i am not vulnerable to external fluctuations weather wise fluctuation behavioral fluctuations or economical fluctuations shanti has two aspects titiksha means acceptance without resistance of all choiceless situation in my life in past and present and kshama that is capacity to wait for the future to unfold itself in its own time then the fifth value is arjavam which means alignment of threefold personality kaika vachika and manasa when thought word and deed are in alignment that person is harmonized personality and being punctual and truthful are subdivisions of this arjavam then the next virtue for vedantic student is acharya upasanam meaning worship or reverence towards the teacher we should remember the worship does not go to the person but represents the shastra gnanam in him acharya is a temple of scriptures and scripture represent ishwara and therefore worship goes to the lord shastra or veda is like sixth sense organ it gives us knowledge which cannot be gained through any other means of knowledge accepting the knowledge given by the veda as a unique knowledge is called shraddha then the next one is saucham which means purity external cleanliness in house dress and physical body and then tougher is inner cleanliness that is antara saucham saucham should be at verbal level called vak tapas and at thought level whatever virtues we have known till now amanitvam adambitvam ahimsa shanti acharya upasanam all are called mental hygiene which lead to mental health enjoyment of a healthy mind by cultivating all the virtues prescribed here is called saucham 
and the next virtue virtue is sthairyam that is will power perseverance or commitment it is sthiratvam come what may i will continue based on sthiratvam there are three categories of people those who never start anything those who start but drop at the slightest obstacle who remain mediocre and then those who continue with their resilient mind next one is atma vinigraha which means self mastery or self management we have seen in tatva bodha we have got 17 organs or instruments and through these instruments alone i have to accomplish any goal in life and before using any instrument i have to make sure that instrument is healthy and is under my control unless i can manage myself there is no question of managing others so in this verse krishna tells about humility simplicity non violence forbearance uprightness service to the teacher purity steadfastness and self control nine virtues have been explained here and further virtues will be explained in continuing verses thank you hari om thank you very much dr satyanarayana for giving a very elaborate explanation of gnanam or various virtues for a vedanta student you will remember again going back to the context shri krishna began by saying kshetra kshetragnya vibhaga this is the most important knowledge to have and i will elaborate on that he elaborated on the kshetram aspect that means the world my body and mind but he has not come about to kshetragnya it is said he has deliberately not said that this is what adi shankar in his commentary said he will explain it later after he has given the eligibility values that is why from this chapter 14 15 16 17 was all about values and values and values we have two more sets of values which i will ask dr sanjay merotra to explain dr sanjay please good evening to dr hegde and all the friends who are listening to this so i will be covering the verse 9 and 10 the first verse goes like this indriyartheshu vairagyam anahankara evacha janma mrityu jara vyadhi dukhado anudar dukhadosha anudarshanam so here indriyarth vairagyam these are two words which have to be understood together which means that you master your sense organs all vedantic studies require you to first understand the knowledge as a important understanding and the next the next process is that how you master your sense organs and your mind because that where that's where the value lies intellectually understanding the gyana doesn't make any sense unless you practice it and the practice requires mastering of the sense organs as we know the, the world comes to us through the gyana indriyas which are the perception organs you get to know the world through your five gyana indriyas and these are like the entry gates to your mind and the karma indriyas are the exit gates which by listening to or by seeing by understanding the perception you respond and that is the karma indriya part the control of the sense organs is called damaha and it has all been described in the process called indriya nigraha and if you understand the patanjali's ashtanga yoga yoga shastra it is called as pratyahara or the sense control when sense organs are in the contact of the sense object one becomes addicted to it and it desires and obtains the sense pleasure and in such people when you get attached to the sense organs a uh, sense object using your senses your intellect gets deluded over a period of time now the next virtue is something called anahankara which means ahankara as we know means self conceit and the freedom from the self conceit is called as anahankara you can also call it humility you have heard the word called amanitvam which means also freedom from the self conceit now the ahankara and amanitvam have difference in the form of their subtlety amanitvam 
is in relation to the mind control where it is more important than the sense control sometimes you may have a sense control for example a smoker may not have the control of uh, smoking if the smoke is not provided to him but he would have that vasana in him if his mind is not controlled so amanittam is also an important part uh, uh, amanittam and anahankara is also important now the next virtue is looking at the doshas of the body which is called as dosha anudarshanam and what are the doshas the doshas are janma mrityu jara avastha and of course the vyadi the disease if one understands these dukhas and understands that they are in the body only then only you are able to understand the atma gyanam so the understanding of dukha makes you realize that the dukhas come to the body only not to the atma or the reflected consciousness which we have talked many times in the past now going to the next verse asakti rana vishangam putradar grahadishu nityam cha samachittatvam ishta nishto papattishu asakti means mental detachment as i have told you there is another word called indriya nigraha which means only sense control now you can have a sense control but you may not have a mental detachment which i talked about so if you are connected to that your mind will not be able to be detached from the senses it is like I think somebody's mic is on, so it has got a lot of disturbance. If they can switch it off, it would be better. Both, when the mental detachment means, then even mind is now controlled, and both senses and mind, when they are make, when they are under control, you have a sarathi to keep the ratha on track, which is what was described in the ratha kalpana of the katopisha. that means that both indriya nigraha and mano nigraha are required now the sense organs are grosser and easy to control but the mind as i said is subtle and requires higher control as i said a smoker can be not given a cigarette but if his mind is still has a vasana to smoke he will somehow do it now then the other word which is called as putra dara grahadishu anabhishwanga these two words also need to be read together vishwanga is over attachment intense attachment and anabishwanga means absence of over attachment you can have attachment to our children to our wives and our house but if you have too much of attachment that becomes uh, you know is a is is not required so krishna allows some attachment but not over attachment for example if somebody dies in your family who is dear to you and you consider that your life has become futile it's useless it is over attachment so you should have anabishwanga and that is an important attribute or a virtue we should have then the last one is called the sama chittatvam and there are two words used ishta anishta what is the meaning of ishta ishta means when you are going through a favorable favorable situation you may like it or you may be happy about it on the other hand when you are going through a unfavorable situation you will be unhappy about it so if you have got a chitta which has become sama you will not be affected by either too much of happiness or less of happiness or unhappiness so such an individual is called as samachittatvam your your chitta becomes sama your chitta becomes equal now if you have to achieve this stage you have to go through a process and gradually and slowly krishna will come to that understanding which i have which you have gone through that understanding even the past and what is that process the process is of course the karma yoga before becoming a gyan yogi you have to have the right action right attitude ishara arpana bhava and ishara prasada output towards your karma so once you have got karma yogyata then only the gyani will understand the gyana so karma yoga is the preparatory state and once you get the gyana 
samachitvatvam will come and i think that completes the description of these two verses thank you thank you very much dr sanjay for an excellent explanation of these two verses uh, as explained uh, like we have raga and dvesha likes and dislikes for various objects in the world there is also a tendency to like and dislike certain verses of the gita and say this verse is a you know i wish i got some other verse the beauty of all the speakers today is easy verse difficult verse good verse not so good verse how intensely you have taken time to prepare and present these verses that has made it such a delightful session we have so many people listening because of the quality of presentations we are now in the 13th chapter we are in the antima shatkam which is the upanishadic level of the bhagavad gita and for wednesday's class which was continuation of the same chapter unless we listen to swami ji's audios unless we listen to the swami ji's notes and make our own attempt like the speakers are making we will not have full benefit of this chapter with that i invoke uh, our guru's blessings or god's blessing that this chapter give its meaning that in every experience that i have prati bodha viditam matam i am able to see the experiencer which is none other than shri krishna within all of us om purnamada पूर्णमिदं पूर्णात् पूर्णमुदच्छते पूर्णस्य पूर्णमादाय पूर्णमेवावशिष्यते ओम शान्ति 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 ओम सर्वे बवन्तु सुखिनः सर्वे सन्तु निरामयाः सर्वे बद्रानि पश्यन्तु मा कश्चित् दुःख बाक भवेत् ओम शान्ति शान्ति शान्ति